Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. So we're going to do, uh, we did a lot so far. I'm going to do, so isn't that some nice paper here? It says the name of the show, the year, and then who wrote it. I really like that. So uh, a lot of Rogers and Hammerstein. Jerome Kern, Lerner and Lowe. So I think I'm going to do, and then the real, the styles. Did you try these yet? Did you go home and try any of the uh, signature styles? So I'm going to do, the next song is going to be, Um, I'm going to do On the Street Where You Live. So what show is, uh, oh, it tells you right there. <laughs> My Fair Lady, On the Street Where You Live. This is neat because this is, uh, I, I watched, someone said you should watch the movie, so I watched it. I watched it. It was neat. I really, one of my favorite part was when the guy was singing this song. I think that was the be that was my most favorite part of the movie. Is uh, where is it, Freddie? Freddie. <laughs> and okay, on the street where you live. I'm going to use the style. Theater Romance, if you have the style Theater Romance. So it's under Broadway, if you have it. I think. No? No, it's under Ballad. It's under Ballad, Theater Romance, or it's under Broadway on the EX series, E series. So if you have a, a legend, stardust, or prestige, sterling, patriot, symphony, liberty, it'll be under ballad. If you have a inspire, rialto, grand marquee, grand marquee, aria, and aria 22, it's under Broadway. All right, so. What is Journey on? What? On oh, for the Journey? Nope, you don't have it. Okay. So what I'm going to do nothing. Well, you have to wait. You got to wait until I get to that organ. All right, so Theater Romance. Listen how beautiful this, this rhythm is. <laughs> I, you know, I like to play with this one. Till There Was You really matches. Let me do that first. Two-handed technique, if you listen to the ending, what they're doing is 
They're taking a chord and they're rolling. They're going like that. So listen to that. Is that one, one, one? I, I just thought, I thought that was great. Anyway, I'm going to take the Theater Romance. I'm going to speed it up to 120. But you'll see, it needs to have its a exciting rhythm. <laughs> Theater Romance about 120. I'm either going to go up to, let me get my other cheat sheet. Up to F or down to G. Here's the setup. Ready? I'm going to do Theater Romance 120, either transpose up to F or down to G. And I'm going to do no drums. Take the drums all the way down. I'm going to lock the accompaniment because I don't want the drums coming back. Lock the accompaniment. Then I'm going to do no harmony. I'm shutting off the harmony, and I'm going to lock the harmony also. Because it's just one man singing. I'm going to use presets. So here's the presets. Eight, seven, nine, eight. Let's see how this works. down the G. So let me, let's break down the song. All right, so there's uh, some special chords. Special chords. So what we got. Wait. OK, there's some special 
chords. How do you, uh, on the second line, A flat DIM, what is that? A flat diminished. So what you're going to do is you, there's three notes you play at the same time to get it. D, A flat, and B. D, D as in dog, A flat, and B as in boy. D, A flat, B. So I might as well go on the third line, third measure, and put the same thing on the A flat diminished. D, A flat, B. D, A flat, B. Look up here. <coughs> D, A flat, B. By itself, it sounds mysterious and strange, but that's, it makes the next chord that much better. That's the nice thing about diminished chords. So uh, G minor, how do you make a G minor? Just, just G and B flat. So second line, second chord, G, B flat. So on the second line, second chord, G minor, G, B flat. On the third line, first chord, G minor, G, B flat. How do you make a B flat minor? Well, yes, but D flat on the first on the pinky and then B flat. So D flat, B flat to stay in our position. D flat, B flat. Pinky and thumb. Thumb, yes. D flat, B flat. All right. Um, I just realized something. On the fourth line, that G chord, the first chord, should be a G minor. It uh, it's, should be a G minor. It should be G minor. After playing it, I was like, oh, wait. You got it? Got it. Is it too far for you? All right, so then, then um, second page, second line, little B flat minor. Uh, I put a box around it. Isn't that nice? D, D flat, B flat. That's the, that's the diminished. What? It's the same one. Same one, B flat minor. D flat, B flat. Okay, uh, how about this? C seventh is C and B flat. C, C as in cat, and B flat. Well, I'll just tell you this from now on so you know one thing. If the chord says A minor, you know one of the notes is going to be an A. <laughs> You just got to find out what's the other one. So you always know it's going to, one of the notes is going to be the name of the chord. So like this one, here we go. Third line, third measure. The second page, third line, third measure. B minor. You know one's a B. D and B. D and B is B minor, not D minor, B minor. D and F is D minor. 
Well, you got. I'll get. You, we'll get to that next time. We'll get. Here's your. There's your chords. So now let's break down the song. Uh, what we're gonna do is on the. We're gonna start off with a, a sound, and I was using a piano and organ. Let's start with the piano and organ, which happens to be preset eight. Piano and organ, isn't that great? So I start on with preset eight, if you have that. If you don't have that, I'm going to go to the small organs in a second. Then on the f end of the fourth line, see that FG by the repeat mark? You're going to put right up there number seven. Preset seven, which is going to be choir and organ. Fourth line. And you see where there's a repeat mark? Those first two notes are the same two notes of the beginning of the song. Yeah. See? Pre preset eight. No, okay, hold on, okay, let me explain. All right. In the beginning of the song, there's two notes, and there's a no chord above it. Let's just cross out that no chord, get rid of that no chord. Lowry, I mean, they always do that because it's a partial measure. They always have to do a no chord. But those two notes are just starter notes. You play them once. And never again. How come? Be because the repeat mark is cutting it off. Notice in the beginning of the song, after those two notes, there's a repeat mark and what's that symbol above it? The del segno. That's the sign. See this fancy S? The silly sign. You can call it that too, yeah. Del segno. Anyway, what it means is you're coming back to that thing twice. You're coming back to that place in the very beginning because of the repeat mark and the sign. So look at the look at the lyrics. There's three sets of lyrics too. How are we going to be able to play three sets? Because something's sending us back. So here's how we're going to go. We're going to do the first line, second line, third line, into the fourth line. Now look what happens right there. There is a two coda and a one. First time, you'd ignore the two coda. You don't do anything yet. You go right into that first ending. At the end of the first ending, there's the FG. And it says R there. So I hit those two notes, and I go back to the A with the F chord in the beginning, because I just hit the F, G. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> At that point, that's where I'm going to change a sound. So if you have preset 7, you would write 7 there. So then I go back to the beginning, and I'm playing it again, and I go to the first line, the second line, the third line. I'm on the fourth line, and then at the end of the first measure, I go right straight down to the bottom, to the second ending. Then I play that line, and then I go to my next page. I made it. Uh... I don't know. I don't know yet. Let me get to, uh, I don't, let me, um, okay, let me play it. Here we go. I don't know. Class. <laughs> this is what it was. 
seven. So at the, the last note of the first page, just before that, that's where you go to another sound. So I went to nine there. What? The two rests. See where the two quarter rests are? That's where the preset goes. For nine. Then we do the whole second page down to the bottom, and then there's a little paragraph. DS Alcoda. Return to the sign, play to coda, and skip to coda. Now I'll be honest, when I was started, we would we had to learn this stuff, and I felt like everything was so crucial, you know? Everybody else knew how to do it, and I didn't know how to do it, and I just got panicked. And they're saying, You're not see, you're not doing it right. <laughs> you're not doing it right. That's not how it goes. I don't know. And, and so, so let me explain. I know how you feel, what you do. So when you go to the DSO code, it says, you read the little paragraph, return to the sign. So I go back to the, the sign, the beginning. Then it says, play to coda and skip to coda. So I play the first, second, Okay, whatever it says, but this is how you do it. You hit two coda, you go to coda, and you finish the song. Everything happens right there. Everything happens on that fourth line. You either go in the first inning, you go to the second inning, or you go to the coda, and you finish the song. Okay. I'm going over this because there's a story I got to tell you about a lady. Remember the story? Yeah, well, I didn't finish, I didn't go over how to end the song and, uh, you know, the, how to know how to end it. And uh, a lady, she didn't, she didn't show up to class. And then we were wondering, and uh, so we're calling and, not, and nothing happened. So then the police, they bar barged, well, broke open the door. And there she was, she was sitting at the organ like a dried up lizard. And then there was the song. And they're gone. She got stuck at the coda and just kept playing it. True, true story. Just kidding. Coda. Just kidding. At the DSL code, you go back to preset eight. <coughs> so let's see if I'm going to get there. Let's see. Yeah. So here's this. 
So the sounds, if you don't have presets, you ready? So preset eight, can hold on a second. Preset eight is piano and organ. Seven is choir and organ. Nine is organ with harmony, like AOC or trio. And eight is piano and organ. Okay, let's see. So if I have a fanfare journey, let's see what I could do here. So I don't have theater romance. So what I could do. So if I if I have a fanfare or journey, right? And I don't have theater romance. There's two things I could do. What's the one thing I could do? Get that's a get another organ that has it. Yes. <laughs> Get an organ that has it. Not the right answer. That was the number one answer. No, I'm going to use Broadway opener, Broadway full band. 65 to 70. So can you use the first one, you can use uh, preset number one? I used one is the nicest one, preset one. And then second, when you change it. Preset one, four and six are the best. One, four and six. Yeah. And then go back to one. Okay. I got it. One six four and one. One six four one. There we go. One six four one.
Thank you. Isn't that great? So let's try that. Anybody see the movie in My Fair Lady? Oh, yeah. Wow. So I'm going to go down to G. I'm thinking G is the one on this instrument. And you hear like that calliope in there. The organ background. Questions? Jerry, yeah. what ending number did you use? I just hit two, ending two. I'm not sure. I like both of them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of lessons in this one, one song. There's a lot, but I wanted to save this for today. It's hard to start the whole thing with this. I did do re me yesterday. But on the street where you live, um, great new chords. Did you hear how beautiful they made it? Yes. Minors and those diminishments. Yeah. Those are the good ones. Those are, those are the extra ones. So do you, do you like it? Yes. All right. Yes. Well, I got to kill some time. So, well, let's see. Excuse me? Yes. Jerry, did, did you have to use virtuoso or fell instead? I didn't, I didn't even know. It's not for this song. Not, I didn't use any in this song. Um. So this is a this theater romance, a great style for a lot of these types of songs. Um, let's see here. I want to do some other 
signature ones. I'm going to, um, let's see. I'm going to use also Theater Romance. It's also a good rhythm for some enchanted evening. Watch this. Now, I usually, I use Paradise for some enchanted evening, but I also like theater romance. It's just a great background. You know, it's also really neat is that in the virtuoso, watch this. They put a nice organ automatically in there. Try it over here on the grand marquee before I go. So here we go. Now on the, I uh, forgot to tell you, I could do it here. Yeah, I'm just going to do the song again. No harmony, down the G, 120. Tell you what, I got an idea. Look up at that screen, and I want you to give, just to show you what's great about the presets, is I want you to give me four numbers, four numbers that you think will work. Give me just four, and we'll play the song. Pick in order. Give me. I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna do zero first. Same song we just doing on the street where you live. Give me a number. Two. Two. Okay. One and seven. Zero two one seven. Let's see how that works. Paul Gail Gilletti. I I forgot to do something. I forgot to lock. I forgot to lock my accompaniment. So here's I want to tell you about. I'm going to tell you about how to come up with your own presets. 
and how to break, how to look at the song that way. Well, one thing is, the second page is a big, big spot. It needs to be big. Now, number one is little. So here's how your presets work. The first one in the top corner is usually big, the zero, the first one. That's Lowry's best. That's the first one. It says theater. And um, one and two are always little. Oh, try to remember that preset one and two are smaller sounds. In fact, it takes away some of the background. It turns off what button? Orc plus. It shuts off a lot of the background, orc plus. But if I lock the background, that won't happen. The lock of comp but anyway, three is organ, four is some kind of string, five is a bell, and then six could be anything. Seven is always the choir or ooh, ah. Eight is piano, nine, is, nine and ten are big. So that's why I went to nine for the second page. Ten sometimes is great. Sometimes ten's like, whoa, no, too much. So one and two are little, nine and ten are big. So when I break down the song, I have one, two, three, four parts. Four, I need four presets. Because because I have the first four lines twice. I do the first four lines into the first ending. I go back to the beginning. Then I need another sound to do that. And then I go into the second ending. But not till the last note of the second ending do I need the new sound where those two rests are. And I want a big sound. And then I decided when I went back to the beginning, I went back to the original sound. So that's why I chose the, uh, those presets. But I could decide, let me do this. So let's say I said eight. I like seven because it's like a lady singing it now. And then nine is the big one. And then eight. Let's see what ten would have sound like. That one I just felt was too many bells, so I wanted just straight organ. So what I should what I need to do is I need to lock lock the accompaniment. What does lock accompaniment really do? Lock accompaniment is, it, what it does is it will hold that whatever you do with the drums, I was supposed to take the drums down. I forgot to do that. So I'm taking the drums down. And guess what? When I go to my next preset, they won't come back. Otherwise, they would have. Lock accompaniment also will hold anything I do with my lower volumes. Anything I do with my left hand sound. It'll no, it'll hold it the way I like it through the whole set of presets. Otherwise, the presets not only give you sound, changes the background. It's supposed to. They do that for you so you sound like an arrangement. Let me show you. Watch. So I have no drums, right? Now I lock accompaniments off. I'm going to go to a preset and watch what happens. The drums came back in. I didn't want that to happen. So I'm going to take the drum volume all the way down and lock the accompaniment. Now watch. Locks. Yes, the things I don't want. The background. Yeah, I showed you. So here is here it is. No, it locks changes I did to the background. Uh, I guess if you want to think that way. I don't know. <laughs> Here we go.
Watch this. How did I adjust the tempo? Because so well, I'll show you what the tempo. The okay, when you put on theater romance, it comes up at eighty. So. It was the, the rhythm, sometimes I would take, normally I would take a, a rhythm like opener or theater organ and slow it way down for it to work. Okay, so like this is theater organ. And it's great regularly, it's great for like... It's for stuff like that. But if I slow it way down to 65, it'll work for this song. And who would know to do that? No one's not going to know to do that. It's because it's... This is not a swing, I don't think this is a swing song. It just doesn't, it doesn't match to a back, back and forth. It's more of the, almost like the march beat. How about this one with the smooth blackstone? Smooth blackstone? It just it hurts. It just doesn't match. It doesn't match to those swing backgrounds. So it needs to have that other, like, watch, I'll show you. If you don't have anything, if you have a march. how it matches. So we got a march, but there's prettier backgrounds. The next level is if I had the rhythm opener, which is Broadway full band. 
slow it down. The next one, a little bit prettier, is the theater organ rhythm. Down to 65. thought there's this rhythm theater romance that I could just speed up to 120. Isn't that great? But then there's all this harmony on the presets because it's a theater organ thing. So I took off the harmonies and I locked them out. And then I didn't want any drums. I didn't want it to sound like a march. So now I, get, I sound like this. Look at that chord. When you do these chords, it's all about the look. You got to raise your shoulder like that. <laughs> it looks better. You know, when you watch people play, some people when they used to, when I see watch, they look like they were flapping their wings. Some people. Where you have to hold the, hold up. Watch, I'll show you. So far, not too bad. Here it comes. Usually, this, this is what usually happens. Okay. Oh. I'll show you what usually happens. I watch up the wrong way. Doing good again. <laughs> Doing good again. Thank you. 
So try, you yeah, want to play all your chords in one position, in one spot between C and D. Wasn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> it's like your finger was there. You could have hit it. You had it. Why would you move your hand? Now, here's two things that happen is when you're starting the plane, you're getting better and better. You just keep looking. You don't trust that when you jump for a note, you're like, oh, I was going to hit it. One day, you're going to play, and you're just going to go for it, and you're going to hit it. And then you're going to get some confidence that, OK, it's starting. I'm, I, it's working. That's what I did. I remember one day, I was like, I'm just going to, was, everything was so like to me. I was like, I'm just going to go for it. And I went and I hit it. I was like, yes. <laughs> and then that's what I knew. And, so, and then I got to the point where I'm playing, I'm talking, and don't even have to look. You know, um, but then the chords, you know, it's one little spot. It's not like you're all over the place. You're just one little spot. You just see the G minor, the A, you know, pick, visualize it if that could help you, you know, where your hand is. And just maybe just do the chords and then just look at the screen, your chord display rather than your hand. See if you got it. I love those. <laughs> Want to see something really neat? Watch this. The, the, um, the grand piano of the dimensions. So we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna take a break for take lunch. Take a break for lunch. And then at one. And then at one o'clock. Oh, there's Luigi. Oh, there's Luigi. <laughs> at one o'clock, we're gonna do another workshop. Yay! And at two o'clock, we'll do dessert, and then two forty-five is the closing concert. Did you enjoy it? Carrie, would you shut that back door if the rain comes in now? Guys, we're